Well, uh, I accepted the invitation to come here and then I was absolutely horrified, uh, not so much at uh, speaking to uh, high school kids, but because I'm a philosopher and I was told that I'd only got four minutes to talk. <laughs> I can't even get to the main verb in a sentence in four minutes. <laughs> so let me just make two or three, as it were, PowerPoint points. Uh, the first is that I'm an ardent evolutionist. I'm an ardent Darwinian. I think that Darwinian theory is a terrific theory. It's an absolutely smashing theory. I, it, it really thrills me to hear the kind of talks that you've had this morning. It, it seems to me that this is really life and being a human and being an intellectual and everything right at the cutting edge. I'm an ardent Darwinian. Second, uh, I'm, I was brought up as a Christian. I was brought up as a Quaker. But I'm no longer a Quaker. I'm no longer a Christian. I, I prefer to think of myself as an agnostic rather than an atheist, but I guess uh, if you were to push me, I'm pretty atheistic on most things. Uh, so you know where I'm coming from. Having said that, uh, I simply have to endorse what Father Weissman said is, I can't for the life of me see why one can't be both an ardent Darwinian and whether one, one can be a, a non-believer like myself or a believer like Father Weissman, it seems to me that these are two separate things. Obviously, one cannot be a fundamentalist, a biblical literalist. However, uh, one of the things I'm sure will come out in discussion, this is certainly not traditional Christianity. If one goes back to the fathers of the church, particularly St. Augustine, 400 AD, St. Augustine was very clear that uh, you don't have to read the Bible literally, and frankly, friends, often you should not. The Bible is not a work of science. It's a, as, it, as, 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 as has been said many times, it tells us where we're going to rather than where we came from. So I, I do want to say that I see these as two separate issues. Having said that, I think that there are issues of considerable philosophical and historical interest. I don't think one can just simply, as it were, pack up now and go home. I think that there are some of the issues I think that one has to work with are issues like the problem of pain and evil and suffering. If natural selection is true, then an awful lot of animals are dying in a great deal of pain. Is this God's way? Did God allow it? Did God permit it? Could, did God not have any choice about this? I, there are all sorts of solutions, but I think that these are things with which one has to wrestle. Secondly, and Father Weissman already has uh, pinpointed this, if evolution is a random process, then what about humans? Are we, as Stephen Jay Gould used to say, just the effects of our lucky stars? If that uh, meteor had not hit the Earth, what is it, 65 million years ago, would primates, would humans not be around? I, I think that, the, I, I think that are, again, there are answers, but I think that these are issues which need to be discussed. And third, if in fact evolution is true, does this mean, in Richard Dawkins' memorable phrase, we're all selfish genes? What about morality? Is morality something just for the weak members of society? And should the strong person, as it were, be the Nietzschean superman at, or woman in this day and age, and uh, just go out and do what they want and ignore morality? I don't think so, but I think, again, these are issues which need discussing. And the, th the final one that I'm going to leave you with is why is this such a big debate in America? You can tell from my accent, I was born in England. I lived most of my life in Canada. And frankly, this science religion debate in this sort of way is not an issue. I mean, in Canada, for instance, we have state supported Catholic schools. And yet, the whole question of biblical literalism is not a big issue. Why is it an issue in America? And I hope that some of these topics will come up in our discussion today.